welcome. Today we are talking about be positive or be quiet or if the, if the glass half full or half empty. We're talking about the importance of our words. Let me ask you a question or let me make a statement to you. How many people know that we are where we are today in part because of what we've been saying about ourselves? Hmm? You see, the scripture says that we will eat the fruit of our words. When you talk, you are planting seeds. When you speak something out, you give life to what you're saying. If you continue to say it, eventually that can become a reality. Whether you realize it or not, you are prophesying your future. This is huge. This is, this is great when we're saying such things as, you know, I'm blessed. I will accomplish my dreams. I'm coming out of debt. That's not just being positive. You are actually prophesying victory. Let me say that again. Because we have trouble sometimes saying positive things. Sometimes we, we think that we're, we're lying. And the scripture says to us, Paul said, call those things that be not as though they are. He said that in Romans chapter 4. He said, call the things that are not as though they were, as though it's going to happen. You got to speak things forth into your life. So you're saying, I don't see it now. I don't see it. But we see it by faith. You see it by, you know, God gave us an imagination. He gave us an imagination. And, and, and he's saying in Ephesians 3.20 that he can do things that are exceedingly and abundantly above anything we can imagine. We got an imagination. We can visualize things. We can dream we can put up a vision board and we can put things on our vision board. We can begin to think about, you know, what we would like to see in our future. Yes, yes, yes. I just had a, a, a the Holy Spirit gave me a thought. When you look at your children, when you look at your children, what do you see? Do you see them being prosperous? Do you see them going forth? Are you like saying, wow, when that baby is born? Little girl, there's nothing you can't do. You're going to be a this or you're going to be a that. When you look at that baby boy, you're going to be a this or you're going to be a... Some parents even go and, and buy uh, a ball. Can you imagine buying a ball, a basketball or something, and you're putting it there beside the baby's crib, and he doesn't even have any idea what a ball is. You understand? <laughs> but you're beginning to speak. Words over your children, you're beginning to prophesy over them. You're beginning to speak over their future. Prophesying what? Success. Prophesying success. Prophesying what? New levels. Yes. You're beginning to talk about what you want, not about what you have right now. Your bank account may be very low and you can't see how you're going to get them to to go to college or, or even buy whatever it is that you want to have for them. You can't see it, but you're beginning to prophesy success. You're beginning to say it won't always be this way. It's going to be better. We got this, guys. We can do this. So your life will move in the direction of your words. Let's pause right there. Our life will move in the direction of our words. Our life will move in the direction of our words. Wow, wow, wow. Somebody need to write that down. You need to get a pen and pad and write that down. Our life will move in the direction of our words. Write that down somewhere, please. Put it on your board. Put it on your bathroom window. My life, make it personal, my life will move in the direction of my words. But too many people go around prophesying just the opposite. Let's, 
folks say I'll never get a break. I'll never get any break. It just won't happen for me. I can't see it. That's the problem. You can't see it. You got to see it in your mind's eye. You got to see it in your spiritual eye. They'll say, I'll never get back in shape. Never. Don't Never is a long time. I used that word one time. I don't use that word anymore. Never is a long time. You are convicting yourself to a lifelong sentence of saying never. I'll never do this or I'll never do that. No, don't do that. It says, I'll probably get laid off. Well, now you're speaking it already. You're already saying that you're going to get laid off. So now you do what? You get laid off and you'll say, I knew it. Well, of course you knew it because you spoke it. Words have power. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life is in the power of our tongue and we will eat the fruit thereof. We will eat the fruit of our words. So if you speak it, so what is this lesson about today? Let's find out how we can either, uh, somebody said, my brother said this to me before he passed away. He called me on the phone and I said, how are you doing? He says, and I said, I hadn't heard from you. He said, well, I heard somebody say, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. And there's a lot into that. You would think, wow, say what? No, but it, sometimes we need to be quiet. We need to literally just be quiet. If we realize what we were saying, if we realize the power that we were releasing over ourselves and over our lives, over our families and over our whole situation, if we realize what we were doing, we would stop and we would be quiet. We said, no, I'm not going to say that. I won't say that. I will not give plant that seed. Oh my God, we got some questions today in this study, guys. I'm telling you, listen. So, I never get any breaks. I'll never get back in shape. I'll probably get laid off. I always get the flu. No, 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 no. Nothing is always, nothing is never. You don't want to always get the flu. Don't do that. <laughs> you know, I always catch a cold. My allergies always just... They, they're always here. I hear people saying it. I never get over this. I've had it forever. I'm going to have it for the remainder of my day. No. They don't realize that they are prophesying defeat. You are prophesying defeat when you do that. Let's turn it around. Let's turn it around. Okay, here's a question. I have a question. If you want to type in something, please do. Please do. This is a, a, a you know, I hope you love my, my, my. <laughs> I love you love my audience. One is red, one is pink, and one is green. <laughs> That's my positive audience this, today. <laughs> oh, God, if you love them, give them a like, please. Okay, so it says here, we will eat the fruit of our words. We will eat the fruit of our words. So what ways do we see this impacting? What ways do you see it impacting your life? I made some notes about how it was impacting my life. Um, I, I made some notes. What, what, how do you see it impacting your life? Okay. Have you, have you maybe spoken something in the past and, and then later you're like, oh my God, you know what I mean? I wish I hadn't have said that. Oh, wow. Why did I say that? Or, or you'll say to people, don't say that. Okay. You're saying, but is that superstition? No, it's not superstition. What I'm saying again here, it is walking by faith and realizing the power you have in your mouth. That's what this is about. The devil will turn it into superstition. So he takes everything genuine and makes it, and, and make a, a, a carbon copy of it and tries to flip it the wrong way. But we gotta realize what God is saying to us here. God is speaking to us. Why is God saying? Because he is a creator. He created things by speaking. When you go back to Genesis, he'll say, and God said, let there be light. And God said, let there be the, and God said, let us make man. And God said, so he's saying, I created by my words and I made you in my image. So I have given you the same power. You got the same power 
as your heavenly Father. So the same way I create it with words, you now can create with words. That's good, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yeah, you now can create with your words because you are made in my image. So what ways do you see this impacting your life? Well, the way I saw it impacting my life, I wrote, and this is a, a study guide, so you can fill in the blank, and you can do it later. You can do it later when you think about it. Do it later. I wrote, my words are my seeds that I'm sowing in the garden of my life. Woo! Hallelujah! Hot glory be to God! That's powerful right there. That's your girl. She created that. That's, that's me. That's me. My words are my seeds that I'm sowing in the garden of my life. The fruit produced comes from the words I've spoken in the past. And the fruit are my situations that I'm in today. And I realize that. Let me tell y'all something. My late husband and I had used to always, we always was a multi-car family, okay? This was before all the cars became computerized. So he was a mechanic and we were multi-car and he had a car and I had a car and then we had a, a truck and all this stuff, right? So he could he could repair our, our, our vehicles. And um, we, we drove a lot back and forth to work, okay? Because lived in Florida, you drove quite a ways to work. Maybe even 30 minutes you could drive, no problem. They're going one way. So we had something going on, it seemed, every year. It seemed like it was every year at a certain time of year. Every one of our vehicles would break down. And they would break down at the same time. Now, I was just getting into the Lord. I was just getting to know the fullness of God. And my vehicles are breaking down. So I'm young in the Lord, and I'm, I'm just zealous, right? I'm saying I believe God, I believe the Word of God, and I believe that God can do anything, and, 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 and I'm just going to step out on faith. So what I did was I went out there to our vehicles, and I began to bind the enemy in the name of Jesus. I said, devil, take your hands off of our vehicles. I command you to loose them right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, this curse will stop today. Well, all of our vehicles are breaking down and we're stuck here. All of the, I, we, we, I break it today in the name of Jesus. Then I released. Because once you break something or once you, once you remove something, you got to replace it with something. So then I released the angels of God. The Bible says the angels of God are ministering spirits unto us. They're waiting for us to give them commands. They're waiting for us to, to commission them to go do something for us. So then I stood and I said, I release the angels in the mighty name of Jesus to give my husband wisdom on how to repair these vehicles today. And I laid hands on them and I said, in the name of Jesus. And at that time, I was bold enough to just pray it and lay hands and walk away. And I just began to thank God. I began to thank him already for it. So my husband looked at me. and He kind of smiled. He says, well, she's put our angels on it. So he went back out and started working again. And the next thing I know, he's found a way to get the vehicles working. Now, you can call it what you want. But I was there. And I know he was in distort. And I know he was getting discouraged because he was he normally where he could interchange parts off of a vehicle because we had he tried to keep the same make so we could do that. And it's, it wasn't working. So he the Lord, the angels were there helping him to figure out what the situation was. But I, the beyond getting the cars running again, the thing that really blessed me was we never had that problem again. We never had the problem of all vehicles breaking down at the same time. I said, it stops here today. I was not going to tolerate it anymore. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired.
Okay? So I had to take a stand. I had to realize the power that I had in my, with my tongue, in my words. Death or life, prosperity or failure, or whatever I had to speak it for. So now let's move on to the next question in this lesson. It says, because we're talking about speaking uh, our words of being positive or being, or being quiet, not, not being positive or negative. Well, the lesson is not about whether we're going to be positive or negative, whether we're going to be positive or be quiet, because we don't want to speak. You see, you can think it, and you can think all day long. See, thoughts are going to come. See, negative thoughts are going to come. Positive thoughts are going to come. All of that, that, That's our mindset. Our mind is a battlefield, and all these things are going on in our mind all the time. But it's not until we release Oh, glory be to God. It's not until we plant the seed. Oh, thank you, Lord. Look, God is so good. Look at the revelation here. Look at the revelation. Oh, I, I can go over to my cupboard and I can get some dry uh, black eyed peas. I, can, I got some dried lima beans over there. I got some dry, dried whatever kind of seeds you have over there. Or you can go, it's springtime, you can go to the farmer's market. And you can pick up a pack of seeds. You can pick up some flower seeds or some vegetable seeds, tomato seeds, whatever you want to. But as long as it's a seed, as long as it's in the package, as long as it's, just, oh, hallelujah, thank you, God, thank you, thank you, thank you, in the name of Jesus. And this is a revelation here. As long as it is there dried in the nothing happens. It is not going to produce, people. It is not going to produce. Oh, my God. But the minute you take it home or the minute you take it out of the package and you put the seeds in the soil, you plant that seed. Oh, I wish I, I wish somebody could catch all of what I'm talking about right here. The minute you release it out of the package, you set it free and you plant that seed. That's when it starts. The germination process. That's when it really becomes alive. That's when it starts to, 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 yeah, to germinate and start growing down below where you're going to start getting a harvest now. And it doesn't matter what that seed is that you're planting. So today, our lesson is about plant positive seeds. Plant seeds that you want to see grow. Don't plant seeds that you do not want to see grow. Oh, thank you, Lord. Look at here. This is so huge. Okay, so it says here, describe at least one statement that you make about yourself, either positive or negative, that you are reaping the fruit from on a daily basis. Now, I know on this podcast, you don't have to type that in. But if you want to, feel free and we're going to pray about it. We're going to pray about it. But it says here, living alone after the death of my husband in 2009. Wow, wow, wow. I can remember saying some things. I said I would never marry again. I said I, I just would n just never do this. And, and I would just never do that. Now, now, folks that would hear me say that, they'll say, well, she must have had a terrible marriage. I did not. I did not. I just felt that. I said, Lord, I had done it once. I don't know if I'd ever want to go through it again. I just don't know. So, no, it wasn't It wasn't a negative. We had trials and tribulations like any couple in the human beings, but it wasn't negative. But I'm saying to myself, I never. Well, guess what? Now I'm saying, Lord, my heart is open to whom you have for me. I don't see myself having to live the remainder of my life in solitaire. No. But you don't want to get caught up in saying things that you're going to regret later. You've heard people say that. Don't say things that you're going to regret later. All right? Yeah, watch out for what you're saying. Okay, we're going to pause here for a quick minute. I need
All right, all right, all right, all right. We are back. We are back. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for coming back. This is your girl, Queen C, No Longer Bound, right here, The Encourager. Thank you so much for coming back. I pray you like my little props over here. I love my company. I love stuffed animals, guys. I love stuffed animals, just by the way. I love stuffed animals. I don't know why. I just love them. I just love them. I just love them. Okay. It might be something from childhood. I don't know. But I love stuffed animals. <laughs> okay. So now, here we go. So, I, I, yeah. So, be careful on what you're saying. So, let's look at, um, let's look at that lesson here. It's talking about in Proverbs 6. It said, we are snared by the words of our mouth. We are snared by the words of our mouth. Snared. Snared by the words of our mouth. Let's see, let's see what, what's going on here. So snared means to be trapped. It means to be trapped. So what you say can keep you from your potential and set limits for your life. Wow. Wow. What you say what you say can keep you from your potential and set limits for your life. You're not snared by what you think. And we said that. It's not about what you think. It's not about what you think. See, negative thoughts come to us all. And I don't mean to be redundant. But we have to realize that. Negative thoughts come to us all. I can remember when I was doing jail ministry and I would say to the young ladies that's incarcerated, we were doing service. I say, it's just by the grace of God that you're in here and that we are not. We didn't come in here to look down our nose at you. We didn't come in here to minister to you and you're incarcerated. We're going, oh, you messed up. No, no, no. Because why? We all get negative thoughts. We all get negative thoughts. Things come into our mind. What's the difference? It's when you act out on it. It's when you allow that negative thought to take root. It's when you plant that seed. That's when, that's when trouble comes. It's when you plant that seed. We all get them. I don't care how righteous you are. I don't care what your title is. I don't care if you're evangelist, doctor, prophet. I don't care what you are. You're going to get negative thoughts. They came to Jesus. And he said the servant is no greater than the master. So if they came to him, they're going to come to us. But well, we have to know how to deal with it. So that's what he's saying here, that we are snared. With snared mean to be trapped. Like a bird, like a bird that gets trapped. Huh? He says, so so that's when uh, they become reality is when we plant that seed. Remember I said that seed can stay in the package? L look how, how long do you think those seeds are? in the package at the, at the farmer's market or at the store. How, how long do you think those black eyed peas or, or, or beans or in dried beans are over there in the package? They're just sitting there in the package. They're just there. Nothing happens until they're planted. Nothing happens until they're released. Once you put them in the ground, once you release them, once you plant them, now life begins to, 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 to wake up in that thing. See? So now, when you say, I never get any good breaks, that stops the favor that was ordained to you. Whoa. When you say, I'll never get any breaks. Now God has already ordained something to you. He's already said in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you, nothing to harm you. I got plans for your life. I've given you a gift. I've given you a purpose. There's potential in you. You have it. You just got to find it. But now you're, you're, the negative thoughts are coming, right? Right? So if you say, I'm just mediocre. I, I'm not like everybody else. I, I can't really do like my girlfriend over here. I can't be like her. You're not supposed to be like her. Look at my little sweet teddy bears right there. Can anybody see them? 
There, I didn't even know why the Lord had me put this prop up. But there are different colors. There's one that is this green and pink and red. And, and each one of them, I love each one of them. Believe it or not, I love my teddy bears. Each one of them, to me, have their own little character, their own little, little personality or whatever, bear, bearality or whatever you want to call it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I chose them because they were different. Not that the red one was like the pink one and the pink one was like the green one. No. See? So we can't. So when we say we want to be like everybody else, or I'll never get any good breaks, or, 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 or um, if you say I'm not that talented, you know what I'm saying? I don't have any good personality. That is calling in mediocrity. That's, that's calling in the wrong. You're planting weeds now. You, you picked up the wrong package of, of seeds, guys. You start planting some weeds out there. We don't want to do that. You see, when negative thoughts come, the key is to never verbalize them. That's the word right there. God, can I type that in somewhere? The key is to never verbalize. Never verbalize the negative. So can I type that in? Never. Never. Right? Never verbalize V E R yeah let me spell that right yeah never verbalize never, I, I, did it put something wrong there it's B A L sorry about that yeah then yeah never verbalize never verbalize never verbalize the negative the negative There you go. That's what we want to do. We want to never, we want to never verbalize the negative. Because once we do, it's going to produce. It's going to produce. Now there is something we can do uh, when we do that. Because we're all human and we all make mistakes. So, so let me see if he's covering it in this lesson. Because what we can do once we verbalize the negative we can go back and, 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 and take it out, okay? So you gotta, how can I say that? You gotta counteract it with the positive. You gotta counteract it with the positive. That's what you gotta do. You gotta starve the negative and feed the positive. Starve the negative and feed the positive. That's what you gotta do, okay?